Hey everyone, I have good news. So it's finally happening. I, after some time, finally started working on my smart thermostat. Interested in the details? Well, let me show you a few things. Okay, first of all, it's not it. Not yet. You might remember this little device. It's the info box. I used to experiment with it. Basically, it's just a box around the microcontroller and an LCD panel which connects to to my server via REST API, pulls some data and displays it. So how is this related to the smart thermostat? Well, the idea is that uh, I wanted to work out the best controller and display combination. So right now this is just my way of stress testing the controller and the display. So since the thermostat controls your house's heating system, you really don't want lockups, freezes, restarts, loss of memory, I mean the settings and stuff like that. So this is just an easy way for stress testing. It's been going this way for a couple of days now and it looks good. Oh, and um, if you have seen my last video, you probably know that this is not the original info box. Instead, this is now, let's say, version 2.0 where the actual microcontroller is an ESP32 based board. So let's take a look inside for those who are not familiar with the subject. Okay, so this is it basically. To understand, to understand what's going on, I suggest you to watch the previous video. But the idea is that uh, I still need to free some pins on this ESP32 because uh, this LCD panel is a parallel one and it eats up a lot of data pins. Luckily for me, it has this uh, SD card slot, which I don't really need. However, the fact that I don't need it also means that uh, some of the pins can be freed up. So I will need to do some modifications to have these GPIO pins on the microcontroller board utilized for the actual thermostat functionality. And I will just ignore the SD card. Okay, so besides this, what else do I need? Well, this is a prototype um, smart thermostat, which means that it will just control a single uh, single input for, for heating. It's either on and off, on or off, depending on the temperature and some other stuff I will talk about later. So for that control, you obviously need a relay. Yeah, cool. About the temperature, you will need a sensor. Now I didn't really want to use the usual DHT11 or DHT22 sensor, but uh, instead I wanted to go with something more serious. And this is um, BMA. 380, which is uh, pretty much industrial grade <laughs> compared to the other two. And uh, the interesting thing is that um, this one is driven via I square C. So this saves me a lot of uh, some of the data pins on the board because uh, <clears throat> this one has dedicated uh, I square C pins. And uh, those are not used up by the LCD board or LCD panel. So all the pins I will free up via getting rid of the SD card reader uh, will be able. I will be able to use for other purposes. And by other purposes, I mean 
these. So uh, sadly, this is not a touch panel. Uh, it's a trade-off, yes, because um, it has some nice resolution, nice colors. I can display a lot of data on it because of the nice resolution and size. But the trade-off is that it doesn't have touch functionality. So I will need some control buttons. It's okay, I guess. I mean, for a first prototype. So the extra pins will be used for connecting these and controlling the whole thing. Okay, uh, now the next question is what makes it smart? So obviously it will utilize Wi-Fi, MQTT and stuff like that to connect to Home Assistant. So it won't just work based on temperature. You will be able to turn on and off the heating manually via your Home Assistant UI or whatever MQTT capable device you are using. Actually, I'm thinking about integrating it with Amazon Echo. Ah, uh, it's a long shot. We will see. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure whether I should trust it or not trust it. I mean, I trust the Echoes in general, but uh, well, it's still a heating system. It can misunderstand commands and stuff like that. Anyway, we will see. I just let that idea float for a while. But the real smart part is that uh, I want to actually use the data um, via machine learning to train the thermostat to make decisions or at least suggestions on its own. And for that data, I also plan to utilize presence detection, namely movement sensors. So just a use case. After some time, the thermostat should learn that, for example, in the morning, everyone leaves. The kids go to the kindergarten, uh, my wives go shopping and I go to work. So why should we have the heating running? However, depending on outside temperature, which is reported by weather station and some other factors, machine learning could help here to come up with real smart solution. And yeah, that's the long-term goal. For that, I plan to use um, custom backend code I implement in Java and Elasticsearch for storing an amount of a nice, nice amount of sensor data coming from the weather station, coming from presence detection sensors, I mean the movement sensors and stuff like that. Okay, so that's the idea. And uh, how will I proceed? Well, first I need to have this assembled. Then, obviously, I need a firmware. So, since this one will be sitting on a wall, and I don't really want to mess around with uh, cables when I, want, when I refresh the firmware for some reason, I plan to use a service called IoT App Story for over-the-air updates, actually initiated from the cloud. This is a cloud service um, th that uh, is, uh, I would say, a project of uh, Andreas Spies, Spies, sorry, I still can't pronounce his name. You know, the guy with the Swiss accent. And uh, another guy who was previously unknown to me, uh, his name is Ono Dirk, Zwager or Zweger, sorry again. Yeah, sorry if I can pronounce it right. Okay, so they have this service, and uh, I was also I was always interested in uh, trying it. So why not? Let's see how it works out for uh, solving the problem of uh, of refreshing the firmware on this smart thermostat. Okay, about the videos. Well, uh, I don't want to make this a long series. I mean, I have 
pretty much the idea in my head already. So next video should be about hardware and Arduino code. And the video after that should be about the backend. And maybe a few weeks later, when uh, it, is, it has been in operation, there should be a video about lessons learned and possible future upgrades. But that's it. I don't want to make it a long series. I have other projects in mind and uh, I really want to see this working. So yeah, that's it for now. I hope you like the idea. If you have suggestions, please, please write it in the comments or tweet me on Twitter or get in contact with me other way. Anyway, uh, I'm closing this video now, so this is the base idea. If you want to see how this project develops then and you are not subscribed yet, then please subscribe, I would be very grateful for it. Hey, thanks for watching this video, if you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.